Cooper caught it somehow. Cowboys OT is brought to you by Geico. 85 years of savings and service. Sleep Number, the Sleep Number 360 smart bed, helps everyone from parents to pros improve their performance through quality sleep. Only at a Sleep Number store. And NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals strike again at AT&T Stadium as they hand the Dallas Cowboys a 25-22 loss in week 17 of the NFL season. The Cowboys suffer their first loss in over a month and it snaps their four game win streak. Both teams now sitting at 11 and five, both locked into the playoffs, but the hopes and dreams for a number one seed for the Dallas Cowboys severely dashed in the loss to Arizona. Welcome in to Cowboys OT here from the Globe Life Studios at the Star in Frisco alongside Barry Church, Nate Newton, Isaiah Stanback. I'm Kyle Yeomans and gentlemen, let's start with the offensive side of the football. The Cowboys held to just 45 yards on the ground. Dak Prescott and company really didn't find a rhythm on offense at least late until the fourth quarter, but at that point it was too little too late. The comeback fell up short, Isaiah. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You know, this offense coming off of last week, you would assume that they would have continued to carry over the momentum that they had uh, with the running game, with the passing game, um, with their ability to run play action and just simply be in total control last week against Washington. Now they step into a game, a competitive game, as we talked about in the pregame show, against a team that you actually have to respect, a team that has a winning record, that's at, that's at the top of the rankings in the division and in the NFC in the conference, and all of a sudden you come out and you lay an egg. Offensively, they didn't take care of the, of the way they need to. They didn't have an efficient running game, which then in turn affected Dak's ability to pass the ball effectively. Um, we had drop passes. A lot of the things that started happening earlier in the season where we had uh, mishaps really started rearing his head again today. And when you look at this thing, you, you know, you, you go into this game, you want to control the uh, time of possession. We did not do that. We was right around 25 minutes. That let our defense, uh, that hung our defense out to drive. What we need to do offense was make sure we was uh, at least 50% on third downs. We did not take care of that. We was maybe uh, three for uh, 11, something in that area. That was not a good thing. We did not rush the ball effectively. We needed to do that. We needed to go out and show this so our defense who have taken over the identity of the team can have a chance to do something. And on all phases of the offensive uh, game, we just failed uh, miserably. Uh, they had a lot of stats, but stats don't win games all the time. Yeah, you're right. Stats do not win games. And either, it was just we couldn't get out of our own way, whether it was dropped passes, you know, inaccuracies at the quarterback position or penalties. They just was killing drives out there. We'd be in a third and five or third and two. The next thing you know, there's a holding penalty. There's a there's a block in the back penalty and it pushed us back and we wouldn't be able to be in a third and manageable. We were like that the entire afternoon in all three phases of the game. It just wasn't up to that standard that we've seen so far from the Dallas Cowboys. And we got to get better, especially with the playoffs right around the corner. Yeah, you can't have games like this and lapses like this where, like you said, the stats aren't going to look terrible. It's not going to look horrid on the box score. However, it just never really clicked for the Dallas Cowboys despite winning four straight games and Arizona coming in with three straight losses. We start our highlight package in the second quarter after a Greg Zerline field goal. The Dallas Cowboys trailing three to nothing. It was fourth down and two in Arizona. Alexa go with the fake punt. Chris Banjo's pass completed over the top to Waco Midway Zone. Joe Joe Ward pass interference was called on Nate Sean Wright for the first down regardless but what a catch Isaiah from Jojo Ward and special teams playing a factor. Yeah I think the play before that was that there that pump before that they saw something on the film um, that they wanted to expose and there you are uh, taking full advantage of their inability to defend um, on a play where you typically would just punt the ball away. Jojo Ward somehow keeping that ball up off the ground and it gave new life for the Arizona Cardinals took it all the way down to the one yard line fourth and goal. Kyler Murray rolling left, avoiding the pressure and finding Antoine Wesley in the end zone for six. That put Arizona up 10 to nothing. Dallas in need of an answer. They find one on third down and five. Dak Prescott to Michael Gallup, Isaiah. But unfortunately for the Cowboys, Gallup's second touchdown will be his last of the 2021-22 season as he is out for the year. Tore his ACL on the lead. 
Yeah, it's very unfortunate. Obviously, he makes a heck of a play here um, on the stop and pop, but unfortunately, when he decided to stop, uh, that knee did not decide to hold up for him. So we're going to dearly miss him. Um, and prayers up for him and his family. And we will talk more about that news later on. Arizona tacks on a field goal at the end of the half. Matt Prater hits this one from 53 yards out to lead 13 to 7 at the break. At least at that point, the Cowboys had not played well, but still felt like they could really turn things around. However, the Cardinals with the ball first in the third, and they take advantage as Antoine Wesley again on third down goes up over the top of the Cowboys defense. They missed the two point conversion, but later on, Draven Curse has an opportunity for a turnover and Barry, he just could not hold on to this football to force the turnover. Yeah, you've got to make that play. He had two hands on the ball right there, juggled it around a little bit. You hate to see it. And that one, that near interception led to a field goal. 22 to seven was the score. The Cowboys needing a score on the other end. They convert on fourth down. That led to this three plays later. Back of the end zone for Cedric Wilson. That made it a one possession game, 22 to 14. The defense gets a stop. Then Dallas with a chance to drive for the tie. Dak Prescott rolling out to his left under pressure. Then he gets this one punched out by Isaiah Simmons. Another great play from that Arizona defense to keep the Cowboys at bay. This was a great play played by Isaiah Simmons was able to punch that ball out. Dak was fighting for extra yards. You just hate to see that come down to that great play defensively. Cowboys were able to get right back in it later on with a pass to the back of the end zone for Amari Cooper. That one made it a three point game after this two point conversion to Cedric Wilson. Cowboys somehow only down 25 22 in the fourth quarter, but they need a stop on defense. The Cardinals just have to hold on to the football on this toss to Chase Edmonds out to the sideline. It looked like he was down. Osa Digizua just for safe measure landing on the football, but after an extra look, it looks like and actually confirmed that the Cowboys would have had a fumble if they had a timeout, but they couldn't challenge it outside of the two minute warning because of that Arizona remains on offense no chance for the turnover and because of it Kyler Murray scrambles out wide he gets the first down stays in bounds and with no timeouts the Cowboys cannot stop the clock they come out on top 25 to 22 the final score they just barely able to hold on it looked like the Cowboys had a chance for a turnover on that final drive that would have given the ball back to the Cowboys even before the two minute warning but because of the lack of timeouts and we'll talk about the coaching decisions that led to that point in a couple moments but because of the lack of timeouts the Cowboys cannot stop the clock and they lose that one at home 25 to 22. We've got plenty more coming up here on Cowboys OT from the star in Frisco. When we come back, what went wrong on the offensive side of the football? And we talk about Dak Prescott. Did he do enough in the loss? This segment is brought to you by Ashley Home Store, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. Three of 11 on third down and just 300 yards total offense for the Cowboys in a 25 22 loss against the Arizona Cardinals back with Nate Newton and Isaiah Stanback. I'm Kyle Yeomans and where does the blame start for this offense? Does it start with Kellen Moore? Does it start with Dak Prescott? Is it the run game held to just 45 yards on the ground? Isaiah, when you look at this game and I know we've got to go back and look at the film a little tighter. But where in the initial reaction do you see the blame being placed? It always starts with the offensive coordinator. Absolutely always. So Kellen Moore did not do enough to bring these guys into this game prepared. Uh, they were thrown off. Defensively, the Arizona came out aggressive, and I think everybody knew that Arizona was going to come out aggressive, but just maybe not that aggressive, as my guy Nate has said here today. Um, they put uh, the offense, the Dallas Cowboys, on their heels from the get-go. Seemingly every play, Dak was coming up to the line of scrimmage, having to reset the protection, having to reset the play. It wasn't just a, oh, uh, you know, alert, alert, we're switching sides. This was a, okay, we need to change everything that we have up here because of what they're presenting to us and how they can potentially expose us. And then you go to the missed opportunities on the ground, missed opportunities in the air. Greg Zerline missing a kick. We lost by three. He missed a field goal. Right, so you talk about those type of opportunities and then obviously the timeout being taken away, which prevents you from having an opportunity to get back in the game with that last fumble call. You can't let Chris Jones uh, come free like that early in the game. He got a right a left tackle Tyron Smith for a holding early in the game. Then all of a sudden they want to leave him by himself with a tight end on the backside. He made two plays hits on our uh, running back Ezekiel Elliott twice 
for five to two to three yard losses. You cannot have a guy like that because now you allow Vance Johnson, their defensive coordinator, to come wide open. Now you see a lot of Buda Baker, you see a lot of the Murphy kid. You saw everybody starting to get into the blitz game. And that was that's what led to Dak checking off a whole lot in the first in the first half and they never got in the rhythm. There was no rhythm and a big reason for that was Vance Joseph, defensive coordinator for the Cardinals, really allowing Chandler Jones to run free mm. coming off of the edge. And the way that those two kind of compared or combined to keep Dak off balance. Was that just enough from the get go to, to really up in the Cowboys? Because if so, Isaiah, how concerning is that moving into the playoffs? It's very concerning because we, we've seen what we, we put on film whenever we face Denver. And when we put that on film, obviously the coach came out and said, you know, Vic Fangio came out and said, that is the, that's the resume, that's the recipe, that's the, blueprint. that's the blueprint to get these guys off track. And now you show another, another weakness, another crack in your armor in terms of saying, how do we handle the blitz? They didn't handle the blitz that well. Did they still get the ball off? Absolutely. However, he was never comfortable. He never seemed confident, and obviously it affected his, his team's ability to move the ball. Thanks for the recovery. It's Chandler Jones and not Chris. Mistake there, sir. I, I take it back. Your name is Chandler Jones. <laughs> and you showed up big. And when you show up big like that and you let one guy basically take over the game along with Buda Baker and company, this, this is what you have. It took Dak too long to become himself, to move around in the pocket, to run, to free himself up and to make plays. And we, do, and we got back to that old thing of dropping balls. You cannot do that when your quarterback is not in rhythm. And you're not able to do that whenever you can't control time of possession. You can't get the ground game going. I mean, how concerning is it, Nate, the fact that they were held to just 45 yards rushing Ezekiel Elliott, nine carries, just 16 yards. You know, that, that hurts. We needed to get something going because we want to be the team that has 32 minutes or more so that our defense can rest. We live by feeding and having a multitude of guys playing multiple positions. That did not happen today. You saw Gregory in that extended period. You saw DeMarcus Lawrence in, in the extended period. And so that hurts. And then when I, I think Parson, I don't know for sure, but something was wrong with him. He wasn't his normal self. Gregory got hurt. That come from extended play. You know, guys are not used to playing those extra reps. The inability to run the ball affects this team drastically. And you, do, you see that show up in the, form, in the form of the third down conversion. We were, the Dallas Cowboys were less than 30% on the conversion rate on third down. That is not a recipe for success, not when you're playing teams at the top of their division. Yeah, and the turnover in the middle of it kind of just upended and a little bit of that momentum. The Cowboys driving, trying to tie the ball game, finally had some sort of momentum on that side of the football and it was put on the turf because of the fumble. Arizona took it back, tacked on the field goal, and that was enough for them to come out on top. 25-22, the final score at AT&T Stadium. But when we come back, the Cowboys' defense had the task of slowing down Kyler Murray. They were unable to do so, and the Arizona Cardinals come out on top. What went wrong defensively when we come back? This segment was brought to you by Ashley Home Store, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome back to Cowboys OT from the star in Frisco. Following a 25-22 loss, the Cowboys fall to the Arizona Cardinals in week 17 of the NFL season. Just one game left, and at least up until this point, it really looked like there were no signs of the Cowboys defense slowing down. They had just forced takeaways, forced turnovers. They had the big play, the defensive touchdowns. They had done everything right throughout a four-game win streak. However, that was stifled today. Arizona Cardinals nearly 400 yards of total offense did not turn the ball over once in their win over the Cowboys. So, Barry, I start with you. What did you think about the defense in this one? To me, the biggest thing that stood out about this defensive performance is, like you said, Kyle, no takeaways. You know, we usually seen from this defense that they were some type of splash plays out there, whether it's D-Law, Randy Gregory, Parsons, somebody's making some type of splash play to change the momentum and swing the momentum in favor of the Dallas Cowboys. But the Arizona Cardinals, they would not let that happen this week. I mean, it was just, to me, they kept running the football, even though they didn't have a lot of success. They kept running the football, and they kept making this defense play honest. The defensive ends weren't able to pin their ears back and just get after Kyler Murray and make him uncomfortable. The guy was cool, calm, and collected the entire game, and it showed as they got the victory this afternoon. I honestly think that this defense did today what they have done consistently versus other teams. And I know people are going to look at me and say that's crazy. But when you have a quarterback that is this athletic, 
and his ability to escape those situations that most quarterbacks can't escape. That's what you saw today. The defensive line was getting in the backfield as you watch these highlights. Watch how many times he's having to be forced out the pocket, but also watch how many times that he just crossed the line of scrimmage and got extra yards. How many times he was just able to move the chains and put them in another down and distance. That was the difference today. You're playing against the most athletic quarterback this league has to offer, this world has to offer, and unfortunately, you don't have the guys to stop them. Yeah, because of the dynamic dual threat ability of Kyler Murray, it really put the secondary in a tough spot. So, Barry, when you evaluated the secondary and what they brought to the table today, was this their worst performance since, let's say, the Kansas City and the Raiders game on Thanksgiving? I would say, I won't say it was their worst performance, but they had a lot of gaps out there, and, and Kyler Murray was able to take advantage of it. As we've seen there, they were able to spread the football around to a multitude of players. When they had DeAndre Hopkins out there, he was kind of force-feeding DeAndre, but when they're out there and they're just spreading around to Kirk, you saw uh, Wesley get a couple attempts out there and get a touchdown. A.J. Green turned the clock back out there and was able <laughs> to get a couple deep passes, so he spread the ball around a lot, kept his defense honest, and to me, they weren't weren't able to make the plays in space that we normally see from this defense. Edmonds was shaking these guys up. It was a good game plan by the Arizona Cardinals. It was, and I think it started with uh, obviously Zach Ertz right there in the middle of that offense. And then as you start working your way to the outside, as a defensive back, you now have to worry about secondary issues. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't have the ability any longer to simply just guard your man because now you're looking over your shoulder as you're trying to play defense, looking to see is Kyler Murray taking off. So you're not able to play the same type of aggressive defense that you would against other teams. It's a pretty slow, very uh, empty box score for mm -hmm. the defense compared to some of the games that they had had previously. I mean, you look at just the, the touchdowns, interceptions, all these goose eggs up there, and even sacks and quarterback hits. Just the one sack in the game today and just a couple tackle, tackles for loss as well. But where does your concerned meter lie in the fact that this defense could revert back to what they were either earlier in the season or back to 2020? Or do you still feel like this defense has completely flipped the script on that and that's just a thing of the past? I think this defense has turned the corner. I don't think they'll go back and revert to their old waves of being just, you know, oh, this defense is giving up just tons of yards here and there. I think they've turned the corner. They realize that they can be the strength of this team right now. Um, it didn't show today. You know, Kyler Murray showed that he was one of the most explosive quarterbacks in the game. But going forward, I don't think this defense should have a problem and hopefully they show their best once the playoffs begin. I, like Barry said, I believe that this defense has turned the corner, but one area that they have to continue to improve upon is in the penalty department. If you continue to allow teams to extend drives, and when you start facing teams of this caliber, it will come back to bite you, and it will always result in a loss. Yeah, and penalties could be said on both sides of the football for the Cowboys in this loss. They were severely uh, mismanaged in that regard in terms of just keeping the game plan clean, and Cowboys certainly did not do that. 25-22, the final score out at AT&T Stadium. Now, when we come back, were the Cowboys severely outcoached by Cliff Kingsbury and his staff? That's the question we'll be answering when we return with more Cowboys OT. Back here with Cowboys OT from the star in Frisco. Play calling along with time management and timeout management will all be questioned as the week goes along following the 25 22 loss to the Arizona Cardinals. But what does Mike McCarthy have to say following the loss? We hear from him out at the podium. Questions, please, David. Mike, just uh, the offensive struggles early and some of the penalties, especially on third down, it just kind of puts you in a hole, a little stuff to overcome. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the penalties, uh, definitely the timing of them wasn't um, obviously something we were able to overcome during the first half. And, you know, we have a big play breakdown that, uh, that we do just with all the different things involved. And, you know, we were minus 10 at, at halftime. And I think just the fact that, you know, it, it was illustrated, you know, the number of things we had to just continue to overcome. They made some big plays. They, they did a nice job of controlling the, you know, time of possession. Uh, but yeah, I think that was you know, uh, you know, something that got in the way there in, in the first half, uh, particularly in point production, sustaining the drives. The last uh, drive it appeared they had a fumble, but you couldn't challenge it because you were out of timeouts. Is that correct. Right? Correct. It it go back to that timeout on the field goal. What happened there? Or extra point. Well, I mean, it was a two point. You know, they went to uh, went to a two point, and you know, in the substitution, and you know, obviously we needed a substitute, so we called a timeout because of the. Um, you know, the decision there and, um, you know, hopefully through communication was trying to get the timeout back because, you know, the, the lateness of, you know, of their substitution going from, you know, field goal to so forth. But that was not the case. What's the message, uh, your message to 
after a game like this? Well, I think the biggest thing is you know we we, we had a you know we just had an excellent opportunity to to get to twelve and four, um, and, and really felt that we were doing a number of good things coming into it. Um, you know. Um, just like anything in the game, you, you evaluate everything, you have game plans for everything, and uh, you know we're, we're well aware of the things we need to work on and, and what our statistics show as far as in the area of uh, you know, officiating. Uh, this, this crew is, is um, weekly, you know, high, high in officiating numbers, and you know, so uh, we just you know, tried to really illustrate that all week. And, uh, but I, you know, I think the timing of our, of our penalties uh, f for us personally was, was something that was um, you know, a challenge for us to overcome. I know several of your players said coming into the game that they were viewing this as a measuring stick because of Arizona, where they were. Did, did you address that after the game as well? Since so many of them made it. No, I, I didn't view it as a measuring stick. I think we know who we are, and you know, I think we have confidence that uh, you know that we can we can win any game anywhere. I think we've illustrated that so far this season. I mean, I was really our focus was on winning the game. Against an excellent opponent, you know we've we've talked up throughout the week. We, we we respected Arizona coming in here. Obviously, they had some challenges, uh, you know, all the way up to the game with COVID and so forth. But uh, yeah, this, you know, our, our our focus was was tight. It was about winning and, and improving. And um, you know, uh, you know, our penalties were too high. You know, time of possession. Um, you know, and they made you know, frankly, a couple more big plays than we did. Was it hard to believe? <clears throat> excuse me, your running game was kind of non-existent today with the running back. Yeah, it didn't uh, you know did, didn't get that going uh, the way we would anticipate. But uh, you know that's that, that's something that we, we have to have. You know, we we, we clearly understand our identity. Uh, but yeah, we definitely did not have that today. How would you describe the game that your quarterback had today? I'm oh, sorry. How would you describe the game your quarterback had today? Um, I thought he had a tough, you know, he had a tough game just because, you know, some of the things that, you know, he had to deal with. But I, I thought, you know, um, what, what he held, what, what he dealt with, uh, you know, they threw a lot of scheme at us, you know, a lot of different personnel groups, uh, you know, just, you know, where certain guys were playing and things like that. So I, I thought he handled that that well. Um, but, you know, I, I think the, the biggest thing for us offensively was that it was really the timing of the penalties. I mean, we had, those penalties were drive killers for us in the first half. And that's, uh, you know, that was a big part of our struggle. Why couldn't you get there? So no surprise for Mike McCarthy, the fact that the first question he was asked when he stepped up to the podium was about the scenario where Cliff Kingsbury ultimately chess matched him into forcing to use a timeout, a timeout that they later could have used in order to challenge an Edmonds fumble that would have given the ball back to Dallas with at least two and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. So, Nate, I'll start with you in this one. What did you feel like the game management and how it was handled from Mike McCarthy's staff and the play calling, the penalties, all of it together, were they out coached? I don't, he said that, you know, it, it wasn't so much the, uh, the management of the game, but it was the time of the penalties. Well, that, that is what caused the problems, the penalties, the holding early on Chandler Jones versus uh, uh, Tyron Smith. Then you, you, then you have a mismatch with the tight end and Chandler. Once again, you cannot do that. That's it. Plays or coach plays about timing. Can you make a big play when it's necessary? And they made all the big plays in the first half. Barry, they had our quarterback killing 60 percent of the plays, mm -hmm. changing the plays. That is mismanagement. You got to get your quarterback settled down, get them in a play that they can run and get some type of rhythm. And they never found the rhythm. Big plays are made off mismanagement. Really quickly before we we hear more about this, what does that say about a game plan? Because a lot of that is scripted up in the first half. If he's checking out of the majority of those plays, what leads to that? That leads to that you're not, I hate to say, you're, you don't look like you're prepared. Mm -hmm. You know, and it looks like your offensive line was new. And this is the first time that all five of these guys got together. And plus, and like I say, my tight end hasn't played well blocking-wise. He's catching the ball tremendous, but he hasn't played blocking-wise or for anything. Yeah, and I know, you know, everybody's going to go back to that second half to where, you know, Cliff Kingsbury made him force a timeout and everything like that. But to me, the, the most egregious mistake was, like you said, Nate, offensively, if we realized that Arizona was going to be blitzing as much as they did, we should have called some plays to get the, the ball out of Dak's hands quick. I mean, a lot of those times was five-step drops. He's holding on to the ball, and the pressure was just too much. And a lot of those times also, Chandler Jones was going off, and we left him one-on-one -on -one with, with Dalton Schultz. You can't leave a prime-time defensive edge rusher like that alone one-on-one -on -one with the tight end and expect good results. So to me, I do feel like Cliff Kingsbury got the better of the uh, Dallas Cowboys coaching staff, and we got to get better. And you mentioned the blitzing packages from Arizona. It seemed like throughout the game, Isaiah said it in the opening, yeah. opening segment that it was like 80%. 
of the time. <laughs> Arizona was coming after Dak Prescott, and that was an adjustment made later, but it was too little, too late for the Cowboys offense as they found their groove in the fourth quarter. But when we come back, we hear from Dak Prescott on how he handled the adjustments when we come back after this. Twenty four of thirty eight passing two hundred and twenty six yards three touchdowns for Dak Prescott not the worst stat line of the season for QB one but it still didn't feel like that Cowboys offense was firing on all cylinders. Let's hear his thoughts on the loss to Arizona out at AT&T Stadium. Can you just talk about the, the offensive struggles early and, and the penalties especially on third down just kind of put you in a hole they'll start to get out of. Yeah I mean you just said it uh, stepped on our own, uh, our own feet. Um, some self-inflicted um, penalties and, and things that, that just put us behind the chains. And, uh, yeah, just couldn't get going early. Uh, and obviously that, that plays a part in just how the, how the game ended. And uh, tough one, yeah, we've got to be better. I know you and some of the other players talked this week about this being a measuring stick game and seeing where you stand. Is disappointing or, or discouraged from that aspect on how this turned out? Not discouraged. Uh, definitely disappointed we didn't come away with the win, but damn sure not discouraged. Uh, I know I know the team that we have, what we've got. Um, just simply didn't didn't get it done as a team. Uh, starting with myself, got to be better. Uh, and all of us, we, we've got to look at ourselves in the mirror and find a way to, to come out with a a win in a game like this. That late fumble just got protected. What, what happened there? Yeah, I mean, great great punch out by that guy. Uh, just got to protect it better. Maybe get two hands on it as I'm, as I'm spinning out of it. I guess. Uh, yeah. I mean, I had one, one on it. Thought I had it tight, but great effort by him. Got to, got to figure out a way to keep control of that to the ground. You when talked you, to us about how you would run more later in the season when it mattered more. How did? What do you make of your running game today? And uh, I mean, yeah, I did it obviously more than I have. Um, wasn't enough for the win, so I, I'm not giving some, giving any pat on the backs or anything. Um, but. Yeah, I've got to protect the ball when I run. That, that's what I take away from it. Can you describe uh, how difficult it was for you to discern what they were in? Because uh, Buda Bank were saying the whole thing with you is just disguising the coverage. If you know what you're seeing, you're going to have a big day. And so that was kind of their priority. Yeah, I mean, they, they definitely did that. Um, I feel like every team I play, though, uh, does that more than they, they do um, other, other, other guys, I guess you can say. So um, it's just important for me to, to watch my film study and then see the post snap. And I mean, I think I did a solid job of it. Uh, they did a good job of disguising, trying to show some blitzes and then got out of there, brought a couple of them. Uh, they did a good job of getting their hands up on, on some DB pressures, batting the ball down and uh, things like that. Uh, obviously put us in second and long and situations that you don't want to be in. So I mean, credit to those guys for, for what they did, but um, we'll see them again. Can you take us through what worked on your touchdown with MG and also how difficult it was to see him suffer that injury? Yeah, it was tough. Uh, it was very tough. Uh, and then obviously just coming in and have time and going to see him. Um, yeah, just unfortunate. Uh, as a guy that I love, teammate, not, not many teams. I mean, can't get a better teammate than MG. So, uh, yeah, sick, sick about it. And, I mean, obviously did a did a hell of a job going up and getting the touchdown. Honestly, I haven't seen it. haven't seen the play. don't know how he did it or uh, didn't see the replay of the catch. But uh, I know I put it up there, and he went and did what MG does. Some of your teammates have been talking about having to play against the referee. Did you see some of the penalties maybe he shouldn't have been called? How do you feel the referees call this game? Yeah, I mean, we'll play. We'll play against whoever. Uh, we'll play against the eleven and uh, the others if we have to. Um, I, I've come accustomed to it, honestly. Um, I don't know if we we ever get things that necessarily go our way, but we can't sit there and grab about it and, and try to. Uh, you just gotta play the play the hand that you're dealt and try to overcome those things and don't put yourselves in those situations. So we can do a better job of that alone, of trying to um, yeah not put ourselves in a situation and keep them out of the game. You said you'll see these guys again. How much yeah. do you want to see them again? I mean, for sure. I mean, I, I mean, to get to where we go, we got to play the best. And obviously, uh, this team right here uh, gave us their best shot, and we came up three points short. And um, if we start this this tournament off against them, uh, we're, we're excited about it. I mean, we're excited about just where we're headed and where the direction this team's going to go. So, I mean, whoever it is, line them up. Uh, we'll play here. We'll play their place, their backyard, whatever. I've got a lot of confidence in this team. Your teammates were more vocal about the officiating than usual. Is that something that you tell them as leader after today, we got to move on, or what's your message to them about that? Yeah, I mean, I'm not giving a, uh, I mean, I'm not sitting there talking about the officials telling my or telling my teammates to not talk about them or talk about them. They, they express their, their feelings about their frustrations. Um, it is what it is. Uh, as I said, I think we've got to do a better job of trying to keep them out of it. But as I said, I've come accustomed to it. I understand um, wearing the star and, and, and what it means. and. 
uh, sometimes things don't go your way, and that's that's all right. We're going to play the hand that we're dealt and try to overcome things. You weren't able to get. You can hear the rest of Dak Prescott's press conference on DallasCowboys.com, and he talked about the fact that they're not discouraged, but they are disappointed in the outing, and the Cowboys really thrown a curveball by Arizona, saying that well, the blitzing from Arizona was a lot more uh, fruitful and more hefty in this game than they saw on film. So. One, what does that say about this Cowboys offense if teams are blitzing them more than they have other teams? It's disrespect. And as a competitor, as a quarterback and the leader of this organization, you should feel that disrespect because teams are coming at you like you're a little brother. This is, this is the first time that you've had your entire starting offensive line intact, and this is what they do to you? This is how they approach the game. There is zero regard for how Dallas was going to respond to this type of pressure, and Arizona continued to pour it on. Quarter after quarter, play after play. They did, they sent their dogs. They sent Simmons. They sent uh, Jones. They sent Buda Baker. They didn't care. They sent all their best players after Dak and said, I bet that you can't get the ball off before we can get to you. And that was the challenge handed out today. They didn't seemingly respond. I just thought this team would be better. I thought we would be able to get off our five steps and three and seven step drops, and it didn't happen. Like, like you said, Isaiah, they came at us, man, with no disregard for any safety about for Dak or anyone else. They was coming hard. Uh, we didn't pick up everything. It got our quarterback off rhythm. And then when you see a lot of batted balls, that means guys are already saying, we're going to sit in the guys, but if you can't get there, jump back and find his eyes and jump up. And they did it. They batted down. On, I thought it should have been a few more picks in this game. We were fortunate. Uh, this team has to get better if they want to be better down the road. Early in the season, Dak Prescott was one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL against the Blitz. What's changed since then? I'm not sure. There's a lot of aspects that go into that. Obviously, the protection up front plays a part in it. His release point with his hand, with obviously where he's releasing the ball, and the guy's ability to get up and knock it down at the line of scrimmage. And then his receivers being able to get off the line of scrimmage as well. So there's a, it's definitely a committee thing. It's not just on Dak. And, of course, no more Michael Gallup for Dak Prescott to throw the football to out with a torn ACL as that news is run down. He will have an MRI and be reevaluated come tomorrow as well. When we come back here on Cowboys OT, we hear from Demarcus Lawrence on the challenge of slowing down Kyler Murray and how that defense can improve in the final week of the regular season. Here on Cowboys OT from the star in Frisco, Kyle Yeomans with you. Let's go back out to AT&T Stadium and hear from Demarcus Lawrence, who had the tough task of trying to contain Kyler Murray. Demarcus, multiple of your teammates talked this week about the chance to make a statement against Arizona. Uh, what message do you think this uh, result sends relative to what y'all wanted to? It's a good question. Uh, I think the results said that, you know, we're still a good team. Uh, even though we was facing two teams tonight, uh, you know, the results ain't come out like we wanted it to. Who are the two teams you were facing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm going to let the NFL handle it. Uh, I know, you know, it's a possibility. We see both of these teams uh, in the playoffs, so, uh, you know, I'm just – you know, hopefully the NFL can sit down uh, with their team, uh, review the film, uh, learn from their mistakes, and get better from it. How do y'all feel y'all did uh, stopping or slowing Kyler Murray tonight? Say it again? How do you feel you did limiting what Kyler Murray was able to do? Yeah, I mean, I feel like the defense played a good game. Uh, you know, uh, being that we just seen them uh, today, uh, I feel like it also helps, you know, us later on in the season. Uh, to see what he's, you know, going to do. But overall, I feel like we played a, a good game. Your pass rush and takeaways have been the story the last month. When you have a player who's able to do what he can in terms of escaping in the pocket, how differently do you have to rush because he's neutralizing that threat? Uh, I mean, I feel like that fumble on the sideline was a takeaway. We just ain't get it, you know, or, you know, the refs didn't call it, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, we learn from our mistakes and get better from it. Uh, the two teammates you had before here, C.D. Lamb and Leighton Van Der Esch, were pretty candid in their assessment of officiating. You've been in this league a long time. Did anything happen today that you hadn't really seen before? Is there anything special about this kind of game that you haven't been a part of that you've seen? Yeah, I seen the clock hit 
double zeros and I jumped off the ball and they called a false start on me. I seen that. I seen that I caused a fumble on the sideline, but since we ain't had no more timeouts, the NFL don't want to review it upstairs. So I seen a lot tonight. Uh, but, you know, even though we lost, uh, I feel like, you know, it's a lot of tape on tape out there so we can get better from it. So Demarcus Lawrence, much like a lot of the other post game reactions from players criticizing the officials and saying that there are more than one team that the Cowboys were facing today. Now, I know both of you guys disagree wholeheartedly with that, but why is that a concerning mindset from the Cowboys side of things? I mean, they did get penalized 10 penalties for 88 yards, and they had a couple questionable calls down the stretch. But Isaiah, we'll start with you. Why is that a poor mindset to have for a Cowboys team trying to get back on track after a loss? Because it's a victim mindset, Kyle. It is a victim mindset. You're, you're, you're coming out of a game that you lost. You played out there four quarters, gave it all that you had. You just weren't the better team tonight. Accept that. There are always going to be calls that you that are in your favor, always going to be calls that are not in your favor. The referees did not take this game from you. Your inability to make plays collectively as a unit put you in a position to lose this game. So don't come out here and play the victim role and say, oh, we played two teams tonight. That's BS and you need to stop that because you let that creep in your locker room, you won't have to worry about the playoffs. Yeah, I couldn't even said it better myself. I mean, you, you hit the nail right on the head. When you when you go out there and you blame other things other than yourself, it shows a lack of accountability. And right now, you guys showed the performance out there that resulted in a, in a loss. You know, Kyler Murray took advantage of what they were able to do defensively. He got out, he escaped, and he made plays out there. Simple as that. You got to tip your hat to him and move on to the next play. But going out there and blaming refs and having excuses for taking L's, that's just not something that needs to creep into this locker room. Isaiah, you was 100% right with that one. And just going back, it's not just Demarcus Lawrence that was yeah. criticizing the officials. There are multiple players that are saying that. Of course, the question in the press conference mentioned CeeDee Lamb as being one of those who was talking about the officials. And there was a play down the stretch where the officials got it wrong. A couple plays, actually. The, the, the play clock going down to zero, and it should have been a delay of game. And then also the fumble that was put on the ground, not reviewed. But at the same time, the Cowboys could have had a challenge, and they could have won that challenge if they had a timeout left to play with. Continuing on with our coverage of the 25-22 loss to the Cardinals, when we come back, we hear from Ezekiel Elliott out at AT&T Stadium. Just 45 yards on the ground for the Dallas Cowboys in their 25-22 loss against the Arizona Cardinals. Just 16 yards on nine carries for Ezekiel Elliott. Here's his thoughts following the game. 45 rushing yards. What did they do to, um, I know situational football played a part of it as well, but what did they do to make it difficult on the run game today, tonight? Uh, you know, they pressured a lot. They did a lot of line movement. And uh, I mean, I think, think that's it. Zeke, do you measure wins and losses by the quality of competition you play? Uh, no. I think uh, loss is a loss. Uh, I mean, I think I think we we had a chance to win this football game, and uh, I don't think we we played play well enough to do it. So I mean, we just gotta you know get back to work. We gotta you know get in get in the lab and you know figure out what went wrong in this game and and uh, become a better team from it. Zeke, you talked to us during the week about the importance of vanilla vanillaing out the defensive schemes. Do you feel like y'all did that today? Um. You know, we never really got in the rhythm, so we were never really able to, you know, really get on the ball uh, like we did the last week. Um, so I mean, I mean, we just gotta, we gotta play better. We gotta start faster. Uh, gotta execute better to, for us to be able to play with tempo. When y'all have a problem establishing a rhythm like that, how much is your own frustration part of it, or how hard is it to fight that off during the course of the game? Um, it's really frustrating, um, but I mean, we got to know that we just got to, you know, keep our head down and you know, keep grinding it out. Um, just because we know that that defense we got, uh, they're gonna get us the ball back. Um, you know, they're, they're gonna they're gonna play their tails off and uh, they're gonna give us a shot. So I mean, we just gotta um, get to work. So, yeah, we gotta get to work and uh, get this thing rolling. There were statements made this week about how this was going to be or could be a statement game for you guys. What's the frustration level right now that that statement wasn't made the way you wanted to? Um, yeah, we're frustrated. Um, but, I mean, this National Football League, uh, you're going to lose some. But uh, we got a lot of football ahead of us. What do you think about the possibility of 
it seems pretty likely it may be these two teams again two weeks from now in the first round of the playoffs. What do you think about that possibility? Uh, I think we're ready. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks. In terms of rushing yards, the second worst game of Ezekiel Elliott's career, the only one that he had a worst game against was Denver back in 2017. Welcome back to Cowboys OT, Barry Church, Isaiah Stanback. And Barry, I'll start with you. What are defenses doing to key in on the run game? Because this is the first time in a couple weeks they've struggled like this, but it's not the first time all season. I think what defenses are doing is they're believing that Dak Prescott can't beat them with their arm. Mm. So they're stacking the box. I and mean, we've seen it. Isaiah, you talked about it earlier. 70 to 80% of the time, they were playing that cover zero look where there was about eight people in the box. I mean, you didn't even have safeties back deep. So to me, what defenses are saying is, look, we believe that you're at your best when you have a balanced approach. We're going to take away one of those things, and we're going to think that Dak Prescott can't beat us with his arm. And today, they proved to be right. Yeah, they're just not showing enough on film, obviously, to threaten the, these defenses. Defenses are coming in feeling like they can load the box because they don't respect Dak's ability to beat them with the pass. Teams are coming up and blitzing like this because they don't respect Dak's ability to get the ball out in a timely manner and get it in the hands of his playmakers. The, at the end of the, the moral story is, Plays are not being made, and teams are feeling empowered to come in here and enforce their will upon Dallas Cowboys offense. So with this one, four of Zeke's worst six games of his career have come in 2021, or I guess now 22, since we are past the new year. But this season, four of his six worst games. So Isaiah, is the day where Zeke could win you ball games in the rearview mirror now? Yes, a lot's changed. A lot's changed. Obviously, Zeke hasn't been healthy majority of this year. Even though he looks better, he's still not what Zeke was before the season started. So let's go ahead and put that out there. And then you also compound that with the fact that Kellen Moore has changed his approach as well. It definitely has changed the approach. And the Cowboys offense needing to adjust. They made some adjustments late, but it came up short in the three-point loss to the Arizona Cardinals. When we come back here on Cowboys OT, we tie a bow on this one, put it in the rearview mirror, and look ahead to the final week of the regular season. 25-22, the Cowboys fall to Arizona. Cowboys OT was brought to you by GEICO. 85 years of savings and service. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. 25-22, the final score. The Arizona Cardinals come into AT&T Stadium and hand the Dallas Cowboys a loss at home. It was the regular season finale for the Cowboys. They do get one playoff game at home, but it might look like that might be it for the Cowboys. Because of the loss, they are now locked into probably the two through four seed. Not mathematically, they can still get to the top seed in the NFC. They just need a lot of help in order to do that. Welcome back in to Cowboys OT. Final segment here from the Starberry Church. Isaiah Stanback. I'm Kyle Yeomans and the Philadelphia Eagles are on the docket here in week 18. It's that 17th game of the regular season and the Cowboys will host a playoff game. Barry, we'll start with you. What do the Cowboys need to sure up first and what's the most important thing? Control what you can control. I mean, that first seed, like you said, they need a lot of help for it to happen. And I think that first seed is probably gone. So focus on what you can control. The Philadelphia Eagles are up next. Go out there, get ready to beat those guys, get the best seed you can available for this playoff and get ready to roll because the playoffs are coming around soon. The most important game of your season is upon you, and you must go out there, take care of business, and beat the Philadelphia Eagles. You cannot afford to go into this playoff run with a loss. You no longer have a great ability of having that first round bye. Still may happen, but the chances are slim. So that means that you have to play this game next week and make sure that that momentum carries over the following week into the playoffs. Philadelphia has won four straight. They've been playing very well. So how crucial is it that the Cow Cowboys do get a win? Because even with a loss, you go in losing two straight, you may see this Arizona Cardinals team again. You have to go out there and win the game. It's pure and simple. Go out there, win this ball game, check the boxes that you didn't check off this week, and secure yourself into the playoffs. You're right, 100%. Go out there and win this game, get the best playoff seed you can possible, and set yourself up for a long playoff run. Get guys healthy, get guys where they need to be at, and let's get ready to roll. And you'd have the feeling outside of Michael Gallup, who is out for the season, there might be a couple lingering Ooh. issues from this one. It was a physical one at AT&T Stadium, and the Cowboys come back falls short to the Arizona Cardinals. Both teams now 11 and 5. The Cowboys have won the division. They finish the division next week trying to go for 6 and 0 against the NFC East. For our entire DallasCowboys.com crew, I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long from the Star in Frisco.